What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. So in today's video, I am going to take you through a full step-by-step -step guide on how to build yourself an awesome Ryzen 5 gaming PC. So this PC amounts to around $1,400 in the US and around £1,200 in the UK. Obviously, prices do change day to day, so just make sure everything is adding up before you go ahead and invest in the parts. So I will take you through everything you need to know and hopefully you can build yourself an awesome system. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out the parts first of all. So for the CPU, we are using the 6 core Ryzen 5 3600X, which has a clock speed of around 3.8 gigahertz, of course. You could go ahead and use the Ryzen 5 3600 if you wish, but I have just opted to pay the extra $20 or so for the X. So the motherboard that we are pairing this up with is the MSI B550M Mortar. So this is a micro ATX motherboard, but it does have all the features that we will need for this build. So the case that I have opted to use is a Corsair Crystal 280X RGB. So in my opinion, this is one of the best looking micro ATX cases out there. It has RGB obviously, it just looks amazing and there is plenty of room to build in, especially with the small form factor. And if we take a look at the back, you can see there is plenty of room for cable management, which is obviously a big deal for me as I absolutely hate managing cables. So if you're looking for a good case, then I would definitely recommend this one. So keeping our CPU cool and sticking with the white theme will be the Corsair H100i RGB Platinum SE. So this is definitely one good looking AIO and obviously comes with RGB fans. But obviously if you want to save some money and you are not planning on overclocking, you could buy a cheaper cooler or even use the stock cooler that comes with the 3600X. So just keep that in mind as this is something you could even buy at a later date and add into this system. So next up, I have went ahead and picked up some white RGB Corsair fans. The case does arrive with two black ones, but obviously I want to have the white theme. These are totally optional. You will need some extra fans for the exhaust up top. So just bear that in mind. So for the RAM, we are using the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. This is a 16 gigabyte kit at 3200 MHz and it will suit this system perfectly. So the graphics card that we will be using is the MSI GeForce RTX 2060 Super and this card will be perfect for gaming at 1080p, 1440p and even some games at 4K. So it's definitely perfect and just what we need for this build. So for the power supply we will be using a 650 watt Corsair CXM and this will give us enough juice to do everything that we need. And last up for the storage, we will be using a 500GB Samsung 860 EVO, which we will put our OS etc on. And for all of our games, we will use a 1TB Seagate Barracuda, as that will give us enough storage to get all of games like Call of Duty and all that good stuff on there. So that pretty much rounds up all the parts, so let's go ahead and put this system together. So as always, the first step that we are going to do is prepare our motherboard before we put it in the case. So go ahead and grab your CPU. Just make sure you are holding it at the sides so as not to damage any of the pins on the underside. And take note of the gold triangle on the CPU itself as we will be matching it to the white marker on the motherboard. When you're ready, just go ahead and open up the latch. Make sure you open it up all the way. Then set the CPU down. No force is needed, it should just fall into place. Then simply close the latch over and you are good to go. Next up, go ahead and grab your RAM and take note of the cutout as these do line up with the notches on the motherboard itself. So go ahead and open up the slots that you will be using. Simply press the RAM into place with some force and you will feel it click in. Do that for both sticks and we are pretty much ready to move on to the next step. So for the next step, go ahead and remove all the panels on the case and you will find this brown box. This contains all of the screws and accessories you will need to move forward. From there, we can go ahead and install our motherboard in the case. As this motherboard does have a built-in IO shield, all we have to do is go ahead and lower it down into place over the standoffs and it will sit nicely. From there, go ahead and grab your motherboard screws that look like this and secure it down into place using a crisscross pattern. Just start at one corner, then move to the next and you will be done in no time. So the next job that I am going to do is install our exhaust fans on the top of the case and you will have these screws here included with the fans themselves. So just go ahead and attach them to the top of the case. 
When you have them both in place, simply grab the fan cables and you will want to connect these to a fan port on the motherboard that looks like this. There is one on the side that you can easily access and also one on the bottom right here. When you have those plugged in, you will want to go ahead and take the RGB cables that come from the fans, then plug them into the RGB hub in the rear, which is included with the case. They just slide into place like so. So now we're going to go ahead and connect some other case cables up. So first of all, go ahead and grab this USB cable here, and it simply plugs into a USB header on your motherboard located here. From there, we can go ahead and grab our USB free cable that you see here, and connect it to the USB free header on the motherboard. Just take note of the little notch as you will have to match that up, then simply use some force to go ahead and put it in. We can now go ahead and take the HD audio cable and this always installs in the bottom left hand side of the motherboard, it is clearly labelled. Just go ahead and plug it in like so. So now we are going to go ahead and connect up our front IO cables. So go ahead and grab your manual as it is a nice little chart here. Then simply connect all the cables up as it shows you to this location here and when you are finished you should have something that looks like this. It is a little bit daunting but the manual lays everything out super simple for you so if you have that to hand you will be able to plug these in no trouble at all. So the next job we have to do is go ahead and get our power supply ready before installing it in the case. As you can see all the cables are clearly labelled and all you have to do is go ahead and plug them into the power supply. When you have them all plugged in, all you have to do is go ahead and slide the power supply into the back of the case like so and from there go ahead and secure it into place using the included screws that came with the power supply itself and it should sit nice and firm. Just make sure that the fan is pointing to the rear of the case as this is where it will get its ventilation. So now that we have the power supply installed, what we are going to do is go ahead and install more cables. It just makes it easier to do it now so that you are not met with any obstacles after installing things like the graphics card and cooler and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will start with the CPU cable. As I mentioned, these are all clearly labelled. Just go ahead and grab it and this installs in the top left hand side in this port right here. Just go ahead and push it into place. From there, go ahead and grab your 32 pin motherboard cable. Just take note that I am using sleeved extension cables just to make things look a little bit better. You do not by any means have to use these. If you want, you can pick them up on eBay, etc. They're super cheap and just make the build look a little bit better, but connecting them up is the exact same. So go ahead and grab that motherboard cable and simply plug it into the 32 pin header on the motherboard located here. Just make sure that you get it seated properly. Give it a little bit of pressure just to make sure all the connections are nice and firm. Okay, so now that we have all of those cables installed, it's time to go ahead and install our AIO. So obviously for this part, it would be super helpful if someone else could actually assist you. If you're doing it yourself, just take your time, it is a little bit footery. As you see in the video, I'm doing it myself, so it's totally possible. But if you can get help, definitely ask for it. So the first step that you will want to do is take your two fans and make sure you feed the cables to the rear of the case before installing anything. It just makes life easier. And you will want to go ahead and set the fans on top of each other. From there, go ahead and grab your radiator. Just make sure the pump cables are at the bottom like so and slide it into the case as you can see and press it against the fans. Then all you have to do is take these large screws with the washers, then simply get the fans into place, just foot it around until you get it, then screw them down. Just make sure that you are definitely screwing into the holes on the radiator itself and not into the fins. Just take your time, everything will be absolutely fine. And when you are finished, give yourself a big pat on the back. So it is worth noting that the H100i does come pre-installed with the Intel bracket. Super easy to change it over to the AMD and everything is labelled. They simply just pull off and slide into place. So just go ahead and do that part right now. So what you'll want to do now is grab the mounting kit labelled AMD in your box and simply join these two parts together in your bracket as you can see. Just make sure they are nice and loose as you do not want to over tighten at this point as it will make it harder to get it on. So as you can see, I have removed the pre-applied thermal paste from the H100i. This step is totally unnecessary. It's just something that I do. You can go ahead and just use the pre-applied stuff. So do not worry about that if you don't have any thermal paste lying around. If you're following me, the next step you will want to do is put some thermal paste on top of the CPU. 
a pea sized amount is absolutely perfect, don't overdo it. Then you can go ahead and set the pump head on top of your CPU and just mess around until you have your brackets in place. When you have them in place, simply tighten them down, giving both sides even pressure. Just make sure you do not over tighten and you are good to go. From there, we can simply go ahead and connect all of the cables that come off the pump head up. So go ahead and grab this cable here. This connects to the CPU fan header on the motherboard that is clearly labelled. Then the next step is to connect all of the SATA cables that you will find in the rear of the case. There should be three in total and connect them to your SATA ports on your power supply. They just simply click into place like so. The next job you will want to do is go ahead and connect the fans up from the H100 itself. As you can see from the pump head, you have these two fan ports here. Simply take the fan cables from the fans and connect these up and everything will be under control. Then all you have to do is take the RGB cables from the fans, then plug them into the hub just like you've done the last time. The last cable for the H100i that you need to connect is the USB cable. So one end just plugs into the header as you can see here. Then the other end is USB and it connects to the bottom of the motherboard in this space right here. Now we can go ahead and connect up our hard drive. So first of all, to connect our mechanical drive up, we remove this bracket on the rear of the case and it will reveal some trays. Go ahead and pull the tray out, simply install it onto your hard drive, push it back in and you are good to go. Just make sure to reconnect the bracket. For the SSD, it's the exact same except on the other side of the case. The tray just pulls down from the top, it just clicks into place, you can put it back in. Then from there, give both drives some power using a SATA cable from the power supply. Then take the included SATA cables from your motherboard box or in my case, I have some custom ones again, but the process is the exact same. Take one end of the SATA cable, plug it into the SSD or the hard drive itself, and the other end goes into the SATA ports on the motherboard located here. Very simple process, just make sure you manage all your cables pretty tidy. Okay, so finally onto our last step, and that is of course to install our graphics card. So to install the graphics card, we have to remove this bracket here, which will allow us to push these brackets out to open up the slot. Then to open up the PCIe slot on the motherboard, simply press down on the bracket. Then we can go ahead and take our graphics card, simply push it into place. You should feel it clicking in. When it feels nice and secure, just go ahead and reattach the bracket on the case itself. And just make sure you make this nice and tight so it doesn't slide around anywhere. The very last step is to give the graphics card some power. So go ahead and grab that PCIe cable from the power supply. Again, I will be using a custom sleeved cable. Don't worry, the process is the exact same. And just go ahead and plug it into the graphics card and you are good to go. So that is pretty much the build complete. All you have to do now is go ahead, put all the case panels back on, plug it in, and hopefully you will have some RGB lights flashing and the system should boot into the BIOS. From there, all you have to do is go ahead and install Windows and your drivers. And obviously I will leave a video linked down below that you can follow to do that. It's a super simple process. It will probably take you around half an hour at the most and you should be up and running. So now on to the most important part, the benchmarks. Let's see how this performs. So as you can see at 1080p highest presets, this absolutely smashes games without any trouble at all. And the same can also be said when you move on to 1440p. So if we go ahead and move to our 4K benchmarks, you will see that most games will not play at 60 FPS. Just bear in mind that this is at the highest preset. You could possibly go ahead and mess with some settings, etc. to get more FPS. I would also like to mention that all of these benchmarks were done without any overclocking. So just bear that in mind. If you want to go ahead and overclock, you will definitely get some better figures. Overall, I think this is a great PC build for gaming, especially at 1080p and 1440p. You will have no trouble at all. So let me know what you think about this system down below. Is it something that you would go ahead and build yourself? Is there anything that you would change? I have about three or four PC builds coming up for all different budgets, guys. So if you have any budget in mind, let me know down below in the comment section and I will try and cover it. As always, if you have any questions, need any help, etc., the link to the Discord is down below. There are loads of people in there that are willing to help you, or you can just go ahead and message me in the comment section. I will always get back to you. 
As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in, stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Thanks for being kind. Thank <laughs> you.